morning, everyone. I'm Rana El Kayubi. I'm co-founder and chief science officer at an MIT Media Lab startup called Affectiva. At Affectiva, we're all about emotion sensing, and we're very passionate about emotions. I'm especially excited to be here today um, because this is the first time ever, really, that affective computing and emotion sensing technology has been invited to be part of the big data conversation. So earlier this week, Affectiva hit a key milestone. We have analyzed emotion responses in over 2 million face videos. Um, these are people responding to about you know, more than 15,000 media units, commercials, TV pilots, movie trailers, and even political debates. We have collected this data in over 80 plus countries for 300 brands, amassing a total of 7 billion emotion data points. This is data we have never had before, and it's bringing a lot of challenges. Um, so we're having to embrace a lot of the big data solutions and approaches that you guys are all familiar with. But it's also giving us unique insight into how humans express and communicate emotions. So why does emotions matter? Why does this massive data set matter? It turns out our emotions influence every aspect of our lives, from how we connect and communicate with each other to how we form opinions and ultimately how we make decisions. So businesses come to us because they want to understand this emotional connection that consumers have with their stuff, products, services, and more often than not, content. So we capture emotions by looking at the face. The face happens to be one of the most powerful channels for communicating social and emotion information. And we do that by using computer vision and machine learning algorithms that track your face, your facial features, your eyes, your mouth, your eyebrows. And we map those to emotional data points. So you'll see a whole bunch of videos here. These are all people who have opted in to have their data shared. Um, Opt-in is very important for us. We understand that emotions are personal. And then we take all this information and we map it into emotional states like confusion, interest, enjoyment. And what we found over the past couple of years as we've started to amass all this data is that the more data we had, the more accurate our emotion classifiers were able to be. And so in this particular example, we're training what we call um, the brow furrow um, detector, which is an indicator of interest, confusion, and sometimes a dislike measure. And when we trained you know, the same types of classifiers with 100 examples, our accuracy hovered around 75%. When we took that to almost 100,000 positive training samples, our accuracy jumped to over 90%. So it's really exciting, and we've continued to add a lot more data to our data set, and that's helping us with accuracy. So businesses come to us to understand the emotional impact of their content. And with the explosion of online video, Content creators really want to know if they're connecting with their audience and if they're grabbing their attention and if they're maintaining their attention. And so I'll show you an example of a commercial we've tested for the M&M's brand at Mars. So you'll watch the video in the middle and then you'll see some facial responses. Also note that there's going to be a green line that aggregates all the responses of this audience. And it's a measure of their enjoyment. So then I said, Mr. Prime Minister, I'm flattered that you love chocolate, but I'm here strictly in a professional... What's wrong with him? He thinks you're naked. My shell is brown. It just looks like my milk chocolate is showing. Only a fool would think I'd actually show up naked. So it's that kind of party. Hit it! I'm sexy and I know it. You'll see how people are smiling, except maybe for this woman um, over here on, the, on your left. She's not digging it. <laughs> so you're able to aggregate these responses. We've done that, as I said, for over 15,000 units, um, media units. And that's allowed us to do some large-scale clustering of emotion responses. So we've amassed about 500,000 smile events. And as it turns out, not all smiles are created equal. Smiles come in many flavors. Um, so the first, you know, so we did some clustering. The first cluster the one in orange, um, turns out to be this highly engaging, like long, in, you know, long duration, long intensity smile. And that tends to happen with highly amusing content. Cluster two, the one in yellow, is what we call the punchline smile. You know, and there's a punchline joke, and it's quite short in duration, but it's pretty intense. But perhaps one of the more interesting ones is cluster number five. 
And we see that a lot in our work in um, the Asian markets. I come from Egypt myself, and I kind of resonate with that one. It's the social or politeness smile. So you kind of like, you know, you, you don't really like it, but you can't tell people that because you don't want to be negative. And so it's this very short, very subtle smile. And it's, it's pretty indicative, right? So you want to be able to tell your content creators whether your audience is really resonating and they're really enjoying it or they're kind of meh about it. And then this data allows the content creators to optimize their content. So we've created a whole bunch of benchmarks and emotion norms. We found that we've had to use Hadoop and EMR for distributed processing. It was taking us several weeks to process all the data we have um, to build these scores and normative um, you know, benchmarks. And so we are able to take it now to a few days, and we're continuing to make a lot of progress in this area. And then what's really interesting is that we can now marry this data with third-party data. For example, here, we're looking at the breakdown of all the ads we've tested by vertical. So it turns out, in the US, pet care and baby care ads elicit the highest enjoyment. Kind of interesting, because in Canada, it's cereal. Just <laughs> go figure. Um, and then, unfortunately, for game, prescription, and fuel ads, not so much fun. So if you're a brand manager at a fuel company and you're looking at your bubble and you're kind of performing really well compared to all the other fuel ads out there, well, guess what? In the sea of content that we're being exposed to, you're not really engaging your audience. So we find that this kind of data normative analysis is really powerful for our partners. And then we can take that one step further and start personalizing content. So we found that we're able to predict people's media preferences just by looking at their facial expressions. And I believe that opens up new opportunities for emotion-based content personalization, content discovery, content recommendation. And you can imagine, like as a movie producer, you can create multiple cuts of the same content optimized for different demographics to maximize emotion engagement. And ultimately, People come to us because they believe emotions influence behavior. In our work, we've been able to predict sharing, potent, you know, sharing um, behavior and virality potential by looking at people's facial expressions and specifically smiles um, in response to um, humorous content. So in this particular example, you can see an example of a viral ad and a non-viral ad. And the viral ad elicited a lot more smiles and you can also look at the trajectory. The trajectory is quite interesting over time. And you can also break it down by smile clusters. So cluster one and two tends to be very indicative of this virality potential. We've also been able to generalize this to voting behavior. So we looked at people's facial expressions as they watched a number of political debates. And we were able to predict with very high accuracy, especially for independent voters, who they would vote for based on their facial expressions. What was telling when we looked at this data was we saw a lot of smirk behavior. A smirk is an asymmetric smile expression. You can try it. <laughs> um, and it tends to be indicative of doubt or skepticism. Like, you're not buying this message. So we found that that was very telling. Of, of whether people would vote for a particular candidate or not. And then one area that is really close to my heart and I'm very passionate about, and I, I think there's a lot of potential here, is how we can use this data to understand people's moods across the world. So this is a snapshot of the data we've gathered in the US. Um, it's obviously broken down by states. And you can look at the enjoyment intensity of the particular states. So the darker the color, the more enjoyment you know, expressions we were able to capture. And what's intriguing here is that for some reason, the southern belt elicited a lot more enjoyment expressions than the rest of the US. Um, and you know that's kind of intriguing. We need to do a lot more research into this. But this actually matches some other research we found that was published in Huffington Post a few years ago. Um, that kind of mirrored the same thing, so that's kind of intriguing. But I believe we can take this data 
and we can marry it with a lot of the work we're doing around content creation to influence mood and wellness in really positive ways. And I'd like to you know, invite people who are interested in this area to um, come talk to us and partner with us. So to wrap up, emotions are very, at a very important aspect of our lives. And um, they you know, influence our health behaviors, but also how we interact and connect with each other and make decisions. And so with our data, you can capture very nuanced emotional responses at a very large scale in a very unobtrusive way. That allows you to understand the emotional impact of your content um, with consumers, optimize it, personalize it, and ultimately influence behavior. Thank you.